great work. Question three. The test marks of 14 students are given here. Find the lower quarter. Right, 14 students. So we've got an even number. So that means we have to find the average of the middle two, doesn't it? 14 plus 1 is 15, and half of that is 7.5. So we're looking at the 7th and 8th values when we talk about the median. So where are we? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The median, oh, that line is important for the median. Oh, that's an interesting way of doing it. There we go. Uh, between the x and the 4 on that row there. Now, of course, that splits us into 7 below the median and 7 above. And the lower quartile is the midpoint of that bottom half. So the midpoint of the bottom half, there are now 7 items in the bottom half. 7 plus 1 is 8, over 2 is 4. So we're looking for the fourth item out of those 7. 1, 2, 3, 4. <laughs> there it is. I maybe need to realign the board. That 3 there. Um, of course, the upper quartile would be that, that Z, that's there. So there, there we've got the quartiles marked. So when the question says, find the lower quartile, it is the one that we just circled there. Lower quartile is, <coughs> that of course represents 23 for one mark. Okay. Remember how we do that? If it's an even number... We find, we split the data in half, the median would be the average of the two either side of that split, and then the lower quartile, if we've now got an odd number in the lower half, it's just the middle value in that lower half. Given that the median is 32, find the values of W and X. Now there's all sorts of ways that you can think about this. <coughs> um, the median is 32, that means that's the average of those two values. Now, I'm going to show you this algebraically, but you could probably think it through without having to do it that way. This, this x is sometimes quite hard to think about what this means, but, but the number represented by that is 30 plus x. Does that make sense? That number is 23, which is 20 plus 3. So the number represented by x is 30 plus x. And the number represented by 4 is 34, and the average of those two numbers is 32. That's what our median calculation tells us. Which means, if we rearrange this, we've got, what have we got? 64 plus x equals 64. 30 plus 34 is 64. Double on the 32 uses 64. So x equals 0. The question said, find the values of w and x. x is 0. Okay. Which means that, well, looking at our original stem and leaf diagram, if x is 0, there's, there's no option about what w could be. w has to be an integer smaller than 0. Or equal to 0. It's got to be zero, hasn't it? W must also be zero. So there we go. If x was zero, w would have been zero. If x has been one, w could have been zero or one. Um, find the possible values of the upper quartile. The upper quartile is the number represented by z. So what, what could that have been? Well, y and z could both be eights, couldn't they? Because that would be allowed. That went 8, 8, 8 at the end of that row. And um, one or, or both of them could be 9s. It could be 8, 8, 9 or 8, 9, 9. They're the only options. So Z is either an 8 or a 9. We're not asked for Z though. We're asked for the values of the upper quartile. The upper quartile is either 38 or 39. They're the only two values it, it could possibly be. I know that there's a big gap to the next value, which is 46. But it can't be any number between 40 and 46, because otherwise Z would have been in this row here, wouldn't it? So it can only be 38 or 39. Um, state one advantage of a stem and leaf diagram over a box and whisker plot. 
can we can we think of an advantage of stem and leaf over box and whisker? Go on, what do you think, Nathan? A stem and leaf diagram shows all of the data, whereas a box and whisker only shows key points in it. Okay, that's that's a great answer, isn't it? So the stem and leaf diagram shows all of the original data. <coughs> We don't lose any of the detail involved in it. It shows all the data. You can see all the values. Brilliant. Uh, what about the other one? State one advantage of a box of whisker plot over a stem and leaf diagram. What do you think, James? There's three identities identity between key points. Yeah, that's a key point. I'm not sure that, that easier to compare data is quite enough because you can. You know, you can have a back-to-back -back stem and leaf diagram as well. There are, there are particular things that a box and whisker plot highlights. What do you think, Hayley? Does it show, like, the skew rather than the... <coughs> I'm still not sure that, that showing the skew is quite quite enough in there because you can kind of also see the skew of the stem and leaf, so I'm not sure it's an advantage. It makes it easier to identify certain, certain values. Okay, don't say to me certain values, tell me which values easier to identify. Okay, so it, it, it immediately shows you the location of the median and the upper and lower quartiles. Okay, so that would be our, our advantage for that one. It's easy to see the median and the quartiles. Interquartile range, that kind of thing. Okay? Brilliant. Oh, yeah, and that's.